In this DCS World video, I'm going to take your F4U Corsair from a wobbling goblin to a sleek strike fighter. With some curves. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Let's get cracking. Now, the reason that we have a problem with warbirds in DCS, not so much modern jets, but warbirds certainly, is because if you think back to World War II, when you have the stick in the centre of World War II, you have the stick in the centre of our DCS desktop joysticks for the most part. Now, the length of the stick, if you think about the control column in a World War II aircraft, is long. So when you, the pilot moves it left, right, forwards, backwards, actually takes quite a long time to reach the limits of travel so smooth inputs can be done. Now, most of us are on desktops with little mini joysticks. Now, that means our left, right, up, down, because we have less motion, it happens much faster than being a nice smooth pilot with our large control inputs. Now, some people do have extensions on their sticks and stuff, I get that, but for the majority of us, um, it's a normal desktop, so your your inputs are very drastic. Now, what curves do is essentially give you an artificial lengthening of the control input. I'll explain what I mean. So when you, let me delete the little bits in the middle. There we go. When you go from the middle to the edge now, it's much slower similar to this over here, World War II. But then, of course, this little boundary here, this little bit is much faster. So smooth initial inputs and then a lot of play at the end. So if you think about a straight line, so if you're going from point A, point B, if you go from A to B in a straight line, nice and easy. But if you go in a curve, it takes the same time, but that black line is longer, longer distance to travel, more play in our stick. That's why we put in our curves in DCS to help the warbirds. Now we'll show you that, what I've got set up and get away from my cartoon drawings. So here we are in the Corsair. What I'm going to do is I'll bring up my controls indicator. So you can see there already, that's where I'm trimmed. So I've got a little bit of uh, nose up trim essentially. This is this little diamond here. I've got a little bit of rudder trim in as well and a tiny bit of aileron trim. Now, for the Corsair itself, what I do for my curves is for my pitch axis, I just have a curvature of 25, dead zone of 2 for my Thrustmaster Warthog, saturation 100, that's fine. For my roll, I also have dead zone of 2, again that's just for a slight move in my stick, uh, saturation 100 and curvature is 25, now that is nice and smooth, you could argue you don't need the roll. Uh, curve, but I'm testing it out and I found this is okay to be, in fact, let me drop it down a little bit, I'll drop it to 20. And then what we're going to look at, the one, the biggest change for me, is the rudder axis. Now, I've got Thrustmaster MFG crosswinds with the P47 pedals applied to them. There's my brakes, there's my rudder. Now, if I tune it, you'll see I've got a curvature of 20, but I've dropped the saturation in the y-axis down because then I have to move my feet just a little bit more because it was too sensitive with it being at 100, so I've dropped it a little bit. And then that works for me. It's different for everyone else, but this Corsair works lovely now as far as I'm concerned. So I need to put my brakes back on, press OK. So I'm all started up. What I'm going to do is taxi and take off with these curves set, and we'll see how we get on. So I'll come off the brakes. Tailwheel is unlocked. It flaps down to 30 just now for the takeoff, back to 20 even. We'll taxi down and then we're going to take off. And we'll see how nice and easy it is to take this thing off with these curves set. It's very simple. You barely need to touch the stick. Oh, one last thing I forgot to say. For my trim settings, I've got trim nose up and nose down on my normal hat switch, but instead of having your left and right on the hat, Sorry, instead of having uh, aileron left and right, I've put it to the rudder trim to trim and it makes it much more responsive. And you'll see that in a second. 
not quite fast for our taxi. Let's slow that down a little bit. That should be plenty of room to take off. Yeah, plenty, plenty. So I'm just going to taxi her, straighten up a little bit when I get down there so I can lock the tailwheel. There we go, nice and straight. I'm going to lock the tailwheel before I lock my, shut my brakes. I know a little bit left, so I'll need to steer right. So what I do, brakes on, stick all the way back to the stomach, and then I'm going to manifold pressure up. And accelerating, accelerating, accelerating. Coming off the power, coming off the stick, back to center. Gently on the rudder pedals, and you can see I'm keeping it nice and straight down the runway. And there we go, it takes itself off. I'd barely even touch the stick to pull off. Right, gear's coming up. Shut the canopy. Flaps up. Flaps up. Now what I'm going to do is start to trim. Now you'll notice with the stick, as I'm constantly moving it and adjusting, my pedals are fairly centred. I've got a little bit of right rudder trim in them, but I'm bringing that off now as I want to fly that little ball right in the middle underneath the gun set there. Let's come back on the power, that's going to adjust our settings, so we'll set it about 2300 RPM and 43 in the manifold. And we're just going to trim the aircraft until we're steady. Now if I wanted to do aileron trim, I can add that in with my other little input I got, but I find just doing the rudder trim is fine. And then we're flying fairly straight and level, nice and easy. Now the problems people have is when they do drastic manoeuvres, so let's go and take a look at the boat. Now I'm doing coordinated turns, so as I turn right I'm going to go a bit of right pedal in to start the turn, come off the right pedal in, right pedal in a little bit. There we go around, there's the boat. Roll left, pedal in, coordinated turns again. And we're flying absolutely perfect, no issues whatsoever. Let's dive down, get a little bit of speed. It's 250 knots. I was doing a left hand orbit around this boat at low level. Left pedal in for the start of the turn. And then we balance that on the rudder. Coming all the way around. Nearly finished their orbit. Then roll back. Again, rudder pedals, slight inputs. Because I've trimmed it, and I've got my pedals adjusted so I'm not doing drastic things. Now, if I repeat this takeoff with no, uh, no curve selected, you'll see the difference. So here we are back in the Corsair. I'll bring up the controls again. Uh, I'll take away all my curves that I have. So axis tune. Oh, that's the wrong thing. That's my brakes. Uh, axis tune for my pitch. So I'll put curve, oh, curve to zero. I'm going to put my curve to zero on my roll and my rudder. I've got my curve to zero and put the saturation back up to 100. Now we'll tax out and we'll take off same as we did before. Watch out for that other Corsair. Oh, before I do, so to make the takeoffs fair, um, let me obviously put in at my five degrees the directional trim there, one degree nose up, and then elevator trim. Six degrees. Watch out for Dave taking off there. There he goes. Go on, big lad. Okay, flaps again down to 20. So again, all the parameters will be the same for this takeoff. Just lower myself in my seat a little bit. So yeah, everything will be up absolutely the same. I will try and put the correct or the same amount of inputs into the stick so it's a fair representation. I'll take off and fly a little loop around that boat and we'll see how we get on.
Right, we're going straight down the runway. We'll break our tail wheel locked rather. Okay, stick all the way back to the stomach. Manifold pressure up. And we're off. Tailwheel coming up. Watching the speeds. A bit more on the rudder now. Okay, we're airborne. Gear coming up. There we go. Flaps up. And flaps up. Now I can already tell just my inputs on my pitch axis it is going up and down like a bucking bronco we bring the speeds back see it's up and down and up and down and I'm barely doing anything with the stick so let me try and trim our level again like I did last time it's a lot harder this time I'm making small inputs but it's giving me those big adjustments because I haven't trimmed in those curves now, I've still got the trim axis or the uh, rudder axis on the hat switch so that's fine but if you notice any slight movements on the controls indicator I had a slight movement it's a huge jump right so there's our boat there let's turn towards it already nose swinging round dramatically so flying towards it similar speed as we were the last time Now we're going to start our turn around the boat. Same inputs on the rudder. But I'm having to fight a lot more around this corner. It just wants to dip the nose down a little bit. And then we're going to roll out and sliding away to the side there. I have to put a big rudder input there to correct that. And then it's bouncing all over the place as you can see. Not as smooth. Still flyable, but just nowhere near as smooth. So what I've tried to do is give you an example of the difference here. So the one on the right is with no curves in, the one on the left is with curves in. And you notice the control inputs on the one on the right, once I get airborne, are going to be much more drastic. And obviously the screen is going to be bouncing a lot more. Now the head position is slightly different just from where I was sat when I was recording. And I do obviously move with my head tracking. But you'll notice already the one on the right is starting to bounce up and down a little bit. I'm already manipulating that hand stick much more than I am the one on the left. Now this is just the initial trims, but if you look at the one on the right, bouncing up and down and up and down. So the one on the left is nice and smooth. Look where the control indicators are, the one on the left. Nice stable flight. The one on the right, I'm still struggling to get this thing sorted in any way, shape or form. You notice when I go for the turn towards the boat, Again, it'll be slightly different with the angle because I turn at different points, I think, but you'll get the gist of it because if you watch the difference in the control movements, it's insane how much better it is with these curves. So looking down, I don't know what I was looking at. So there's the boat over to the right on the no curves. So I turn in big, massive input, rolling in. And then the one on the left, nice smooth inputs have turned in. Then we see as we start our turn around the boat. The one on the left, the joystick is moving wildly to keep that turn stable and steady. Whereas if we see the one on the left hand side, I'm just checking there's nothing there. The one on the left hand side will start the turn. And the control stick is much, much more stable. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. My initial impression of the Corsair was meh because the flight model was a bit janky. However, with these curves, it flies like an absolute dream and I'm really, really enjoying this module now. It's properly good. If you disagree with anything or if you get any more hints and tips, please put them in the comments so that we as a community can help make this an even better aircraft because it deserves to be because the Corsair is cool as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. and Until next time, Tactical Pascal out. Three,